Today on the Skid Factory, we're gonna get that Datsun difference. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. It's been a little while since we've done a build review. And this car just popped up at the shed. We're gonna do a little bit of work on it. So we thought, why not check it out as it is now. This car belongs to our mate, Timmy. You'll probably remember Timmy from his invaluable wiring work during the crown build. Uh, he was sort of in charge of the entire wiring process. Uh, he sort of does it as a bit of a part-time sort of hobby slash business sort of thing. Uh, and he's very good at it. So uh, Timmy gave us a lot of time and uh, effort. So we're going to sort of re repay the favour by doing a bit of work on it on his car for him. So a bit of history on this car. It is a 1981 Datsun Bluebird 910 model. These cars were built in Australia by Nissan Australia. So they are a sort of an Australianized version of the Japanese designed vehicle. There was a lot of Australian components used in them as was most sort of imported cars at the time or, or import brands. They used Australian components and built them in the, in the country and that was for sort of taxation and pricing reasons. It allowed them to build a car for less money and have less taxation. So they were more competitive on the market. So they sold a lot of these cars. They came with an L20B, so a two litre four cylinder engine and either auto, manual, whatever. I think it had a Borg Warner diff in it, uh, which is also an Australian made thing that was in every other car also made in Australia at the time. And they were a pretty popular thing. I actually, my parents actually had one of these when I was a young fella and I spent many, many hours in the passenger seat driving all over Queensland in it. So um, there's a few survivors left and this is one of them. Of course, leaving that L20B in there was never, never the plan. So I, I don't even know why he, where this came from. It may have had something to do with me or not. He's a Datto guy. But at the time, I was playing around with VQ30 engines, which is what's fitted to it. Uh, I think from memory, they started coming in uh, as imported engines, which at the time, was that, that was a big uh, sort of import business. There was a lot of engines available straight out of Japan, usually in reasonably good condition and for cheap. And this VQ30 engine was factory turbo and it was fitted to the lesser model luxury cars. So the V8 engine would have been in the, in the top, of, of top of the range and this one was the, the next down. It still had the same power as the V8, but obviously it's not a V8, so it's not quite as cool. But they were very unloved as, as, as far as a conversion engine. So unloved and therefore very cheap. There was a lot of them around and they, didn't, they just didn't ask much money for them because they couldn't move them. And that is pretty much the engine that we are always looking for. So Timmy picked up an assembly and he brought it up to me at AM Auto where I, where I was at the time. And I made the engine mounts and exhaust manifolding, etc., to mount a GT3582 turbo. So this was... This was about 11 years ago, so there was no billet turbos and that sort of stuff back then. The transmission on the back of it uh, at the time was a the, the factory fitted Jatco RE4 R03A. It's a very long name for a gearbox. So it's the big, uh, heavy, high torque transmission, same as what's used in patrols and the, all the V8 cars at the time. Um, the rear diff is a, a Hilux unit that's had all the bracketry for a Bluebird fitted to it. So it's a triangulated four link with struts that come off the top of the, the diff. So it's a little bit different, but does the job. So that was all connected up. And I think we ran it on a Sprint 500, which was the Haltech little baby ECU, looked like a cigarette packet. Uh, we love those things. They packed a lot of punch for the day, really cheap and did the job. And it made a fair bit of power. I can't remember the exact number, but I'd say it's probably around 400 horsepower at the wheels and um, had a lot of fun thrashing it around the track at Power Cruise. I think your wheel nuts are loose. <laughs> Uh, 
until it did a bearing. Uh, this is not uncommon for these engines. They have very, very tight tolerances in the bottom end. They were never meant to be sort of a high performance engine, more just a, a powerful luxury engine. So nipping a rod bearing was not uncommon at the time. And we also did exactly the same thing to uh, our mate Matt's R32 Skyline, which also had one of these engines fitted to it. So that was the thing that happened. Timmy persevered though. I, for some reason, which I didn't even remember, but I actually had a spare engine. We had lots of engines lying around at the time. I was going on a bit of a buying spree. So I had one that was a bit haggard looking and I sold it to him for about $300. And he cleaned it inside and out with oven cleaner because it was that, it was nasty. Like it looked like it never had an oil change but it must have been seasoned nicely because it stayed in there for many years and worked really well. Uh, quarter mile wise, he ran it down the quarter with that engine in it and it did a 10.7. So obviously quite an impressive power output and gets it to the ground, works really well. He uh, then started messing around with a built auto. I think he trans braked it, did a bunch of other stuff to it to strengthen it up a bit and that, somehow turned into a disaster and he um, threw it away and put a power glide in it. So currently has a power glide with a trans brake fitted to it. Old Faithful, they really work well for drag racing and it also uh, obviously delivers a much better time due to the trans brake and converter availability is probably the biggest thing. Uh, next came an engine build. Timmy doesn't settle down. He wants to keep going and changing things all the time. This took a little bit of time. He ended up with a VQ35, which is obviously the 350Z engine, the bigger brother of this. He made a sort of a hybrid engine out of this VQ35 bottom end with the VQ heads. And it had sort of some levels of success, but not very. And that led on to what's in it now, which is a built bottom end. It's forged rods and pistons, head studs. It's got cams pretty much everything you need to make make good reliable power and it's 10 to 1 compression i think he said so quite high but obviously running on e85 so no dramas there current performance is about 550 horsepower at the wheels and it's done hasn't done it down the quarter but he's done a, an eighth mile pass of 630 at 110 mile an hour which is if you're not familiar with eighth mile racing it kind of it converts over to a, probably a high nine second pass so it's no slouch. Um, I think the car's had about four different ECUs fitted to it over the years, and the current ECU is a Haltech Nexus R5. Timmy's a wiring nerd. He loves it, and he's very good at it. He also loves the latest technology, so he's uh, upgraded it recently to the Nexus R5. It's got every sensor you can think of and probably some you didn't even know existed. All the stuff you need for data logging to sort of know whether the system's working right, which is, that's probably the biggest benefit of it. Uh, it's also got a Haltech IC7 dash and the uh, 15 button keypad. So very similar to what the Crown's got. So lots of good stuff going on there. Fuel system wise, it's got the stock fuel tank with a lift pump pumping into a racework surge tank. Uh, the same unit that we recently fitted to the Fairlane. Beautiful looking piece. It's got a couple of Walbro 450 pumps inside it all AN fittings, really neat addition to the boot. So we've got plenty of fuel system, a built motor, a good electronics package. The only thing really letting it down right now is the turbo and exhaust system size. That's why it's here. It's currently got a GDX 3584 RS on it with a 0.82 exhaust housing. It's a bit small in the housing. They are a great turbo, but it's just not performing in, in this environment. So. That's going to get swapped out for a G40 turbo with a large exhaust housing. We're going to upgrade the wastegate. We're going to fit a GFB BOV to protect the new turbo. And I'm going to fabricate a 4 inch into 3.5 inch stainless steel exhaust for it. Then we'll send it down to the HOF, see how much power it makes and hopefully get it to the track. That'll all be on a future episode of the Skid Factory. So don't forget to like and subscribe and you might get that that's indifference too. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.
that's an cut away. Can just use this one instead of using the old one. Remember this thing? We've dug it out. We're going to dust it off and we're going to shove it in a truck and send it to Summonats 35, January 5th to the 8th of 2023. They won't let me drive it around though because it's not registered. So I'm going to have to take a cruising car. So the Crown's going as well and the Bedford and we're going to go cruising in them and racing in this. You might be able to get a, a ride around in the back of the Bedford or the Crown. There's plenty of seats in the Bedford. So hit us up. Summonats 35, January 5th to the 8th. You can buy tickets here or check the link in the description and we'll see you there.